George Carlin continues as one of America's truly gifted comedians by always finding what is laughable and ludicrous in our world and in ourselves. His new HBO special, Live from New York's Beacon Theater, airs on February the 6th, and it's always a pleasure to have Mr. Carlin in the chair opposite me here at CBS. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you again for uh, having me. Uh, you know, since you were last here, this whole thing with Mark, Mike Barnacle in the Boston newspaper started up right. where he lost his job because he filched from your book. He took some of your material and yeah. printed it without giving you credit. You really weren't a player in this at all. You were no. kind of a bystander, weren't you? Yeah, I, as I was in that, that uh, Supreme Court case of... The seven some, words. Sometimes it's seven dirty words, yeah. I, I gained all... You know, I benefited from it. I didn't have to participate at all. I just lay low during those things, uh, or lie low, and uh, something good happens to me. Uh, not to Mr. Barnacle, unfortunately, for him. But I think he's probably better off, and, he, and I think he'll probably say that in the long run. I think there's a freedom that he has now that, uh, that he might just savor. Well, he's out of work. For <laughs> well, isn't he doing some things? Uh, I think so. Kind of free, in the freelance sense, I don't know that that's the word for it. But. Have you met him? Do you I, know? I, we we uh, talked on the phone. When it happened, I wanted to call him. Uh, see, I, I heard his initial explanation, which was, you know, that a friend had given a uh, right. source, a person gives him jokes from time to time. And there were ten of them from my book, and they were, each one was slightly changed. The interesting thing was they were changed for the worse. Uh, from my professional standpoint, right. uh, they, they got worse. For instance, I, one of the jokes was just a single line of... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that someday the Pope will come out on that little balcony and give the football scores. And it's an interesting kind of funny line. Uh, and they changed it to baseball. And it's not as funny. No, it's not. F football is, is the score. That's the score you have to give. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, I called and told him that I wasn't going to give him any heat and, you know, make his life even more miserable. And I was just going to sit on the sidelines. Then I sent him a book and signed it to him. I said, uh, to Mike, uh, here, be my guest. This eliminates the middleman. <laughs> Or something like that. <laughs> so he was nice and he was friendly. Did it renew interest in your book at all, the fact that it was mentioned in this controversy? Oh, yes. It, you know, as you know, this, this thing raged for a week or two. Sure. And Don Imus, who, who happens to like the book, uh, mentioned it every time, uh, naturally. So uh, the book was, uh, it, had, it was just about ending. It spent a total of 38 weeks on the New York Times list in the two formats, hardcover and softcover. And it, it was on its way out. It was had to drop down to yeah, number they do eleven. That after a while, I have to, even the Bible, huh? Exactly. And it dropped down to number eleven, <laughs> and uh, he kicked it back up to number seven. I got about four weeks of life out of the book that, that probably wouldn't have been in it otherwise. To your knowledge, have any other comedians ever stolen your stuff? You know, now and again, comics steal each other's yeah. material. Not to my knowledge, except one person at uh, one time. This was back uh, in the, the late '60s, and I had a, I had a routine about birth control pills. And I said, someday they'll, uh, they'll be over the counter and they'll have common uh, kind of names that we have for our products. Baby, maybe, Papa Stopper, Mommy Not, Preg Not, uh, Womb Broom. I think Womb Broom was one of them. So uh, this was a routine of mine. It lasted a long time, you know, several years. And some guy just lifted it and, and was doing it verbatim. And a guy we all know uh, at the Ice House out here, a coffee uh -huh. shop, coffee house. So I went there and I just told him, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, that's mine. Have you ever uh, not, not knowingly. lifted any buttons? No, not knowingly. I, I will sometimes, Pat McCormick had two lines that, that I used and got his permission to use. You can't credit someone when you're on stage. It kind of breaks the rhythm. Yeah, yes, it does. So, uh, by the way, here's a joke told by. <laughs> yeah, right. You have to have a little uh, pass out things to the audience. But anyway, uh, no, I, I never have knowingly done that. Uh, sometimes you do find someone else doing something very similar. It makes you a little sure. more comfortable. That's why I don't watch a lot of comics. I don't want to say, oh, he's doing something that I have plans for. He's on a subject that I plan to, to look into, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I don't want to listen. What are you planning on looking into? What, what, what's, uh, what's in the future in the, in, in the uh, gun sight of George Carlin? Well, the, the HBO show, which as you were kind enough to say, is a, a live show February 6th. It's called You Are All Diseased. That's the title of the show. And that's my little love note to the American people. You're all diseased. You are all diseased. And, um, but see, by saying you, you leave out yourself. Of course. I've always done that. I'm not in this thing. <laughs> I'm a member of the human race, technically, but I don't have to go to the meeting, <laughs> I got you. which okay. is wonderful. <laughs> um, and, and so uh, I'm attacking, among other things, uh, democracy, God, white people, men, uh, children, uh, angels, uh, cigars, Harley Davidson theme restaurants, uh, men. I said, Matt, that some nice attacks on the male problem on this planet, uh, although I only touch it lightly, it's only about four or five minutes. But things, things of that nature, airport security and fear of germs. Uh, children? Yeah, they're overrated and overvalued. 
absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, one by one, they're fine. And as a concept, I understand it. You know, continue the species. Yeah. I do understand that. But um, they're over uh, romanticized in this culture right now. It's all you ever hear on television. Any news story you hear is going to be pegged to children's benefit, children's welfare, something good for children, something's bad for children, going to change this, our kids. Uh, anyone who's, who's BSing you, in public, we'll, we'll talk about kids and the families and not the kids and the children, the kind of shit, couldn't be kind of shit. And it's this, you know, it's not, it's, it's not very honest. What is it again? It's this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not very honest. And uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, and kids are really, uh, they're being used as props and objects. They're, they're these, yupp, these yuppie boomer parents have turned children into objects. Fetishes is what they are. There's this uh, fixation, this, this neurotic fixation on what's good for the children. And I think you ought to leave them alone. They're overscheduled for one thing. They go from Cub Scouts to Little League to, to baseball to gym. Well, they want to round them out as complete human beings, George. No, that's not what they're doing. You know, they're turning them into little morons, little... Uh, they even have such things as how to organize your backpack. They have classes in this. They have tutors for this. How to organize your backpack. They're overscheduled. You have to have play dates. They have a thing called play dates. Oh, I know. Dates. I yeah. know. Well, I, I know. know. My know granddaughter this. has play dates. You're okay, right? and, and it's very, very strange to me. And I think what kids should be allowed to do is to have an hour every day. It should be mandatory. An hour a day for daydreaming. Just sitting by the window, turn off everything electronic, Fantasize, put the homework away. daydream, Just imagine. sit there, look at the clouds, look at the trees, think, wonder, and go through that. Once a day, I think it would be healthy for them. By the way, not only for children. How about yeah. for us? Oh, it would be wonderful yeah. if, if, people, if people weren't working 80 hours a week so they could have a, uh, a new snowblower and a, um, a salad shooter. <laughs> a, a salad. We don't have the brown. We have the ivory. We don't have the brown. The brown <laughs> salad shooter for fall. You know, these people, I'm telling you, that's, and that's what's happening to these children. They're being turned into little consumers. They're, they're commodities by now. You know, I mean, they're, they're such a, a big part of the... How about if the Pope came out one day? with a salad shooter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, as long as he was aiming at some children in St. Peter's Square, that would, that would satisfy me. You know, you mentioned the seven words on television, which was a controversy way back on the mm. trail. W when you started out as a comedian, did you want to be a controversial man? Did you mm, want to be involved no. in controversy? No, but I always had an ear for and a, and a, and a taste for uh, swimming against the, the, tide. the tide. Okay. And uh, being out of step. I always prided myself on that in school. Well, I went through so many schools, it was apparent <laughs> early. You know, he's leaving again. Where are you going? We don't know, but he'll show up. But he's somewhere. gone. <laughs> yes, and there'll be another bad report card. But actually, the report cards weren't that bad. But it was my behavior. Uh, uh, no, but I always wanted, I always like to kind of pick at something. I always like to make the, the audience a little bit uncomfortable, a little, may just make them go a couple of times like this, you know, when is he going to get off this subject, you know, is he going to, is he going to do this all the time? Or maybe they're saying, you know, there's a little kernel of truth in what this guy said. Yeah, well, that was the colonel who kicked me out of the Air Force. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, of course. I mean, that's what all comics are looking for, to, to expose something uh, that we all know and don't admit publicly too much. And, and I always in, enjoyed doing that. And I think if you can be funny and have some thought, I don't sit down and say, I'm going to make them think. That would be absurd. Of course. But it happens that if you have ideas at the root of your comedy, they will come away saying, yeah, you know, I didn't think of that like that. That's a new way to look at that. Yeah, plus I think if people are laughing and people are laughing, they're enjoying themselves, yeah. okay, I think their minds might be more open. Yeah. You're, more open, you're more receptive. Never, it's the most zen-like moment we have. The moment of surprise and laughter, you're wide open. All your defenses are down, and an idea can actually float through. What a concept, As huh? opposed to this thing, you know. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. We are uh, chatting here with George Carlin. He'll be live from New York's Beacon Theater on HBO on the 6th of February. You'll check the listings in your town for the exact time. Uh, the toll free is up and running. Back with George and you after this break. With George Carlin, here's Kevin on the toll-free in Clifton, New Jersey. Hi, uh, uh, Kevin, and welcome to CBS. Hello. Hi, Tom. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Hope you are. What's on your mind tonight, young man? Yes, I would like to ask Mr. Carlin that, sure. um, you know, in, in all his life, what has he done that he would, would, would like to do you know, in his life? What would I still like to do that I haven't done? Any topic you haven't taken on? Any situation oh. you haven't done? Uh, n no, I have, I have plans for a lot of topics I haven't yet taken on. So there's going to be one more HBO show after this one. But a larger way to answer that question is, 
what I want to do after I've finished my stand-up life, which I think is about another two or three years down the line. I don't want to keep going to York, Pennsylvania, much as I enjoy all the places I go to. <laughs> I don't want to know that I'm going there again. So, uh, so uh, I want to do a Broadway show, a one press, they call them one man. That's all I ever did was one man shows, but a one person show uh, that would be a little more um, theatrical, a little less like stand-up, a little more a chance for some poignancy and some, uh, you know, some reminiscence. It's about my my young life in New York is what I want to do. You know, there was a uh, there was a show done by the late Dick Sean, who yes. most people regard as brilliant. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the second greatest entertainer in the world. I don't even know if you ever saw this piece that he did. It was uh, a one person show. Uh, yes, I, I saw it at, at that time. I wish I could recall more about it at this moment because I'm not good at that. I, That's I apologize, okay. but. But it, it, it was somewhat, there, there was some autobiography in it, and yeah. there was some performance in it, and right. there was some stand-up in it. Would yeah. that be something like what you're thinking yeah, about? Yeah, I'm thinking of, uh, you know, a little less... Uh, uh, and some music was in it, too. All right, I wouldn't have that, but a little less produced than Lily Tomlin does. Right. But, uh, but on that order, where I'd be playing some characters, uh, maybe put, throw a scarf on and a hat and walk into a pin spot or something, have a little bit of staging, Very good. and speak to the middle distance and not be looking for a laugh every 10, 20 seconds. Kevin, very good question. Thank I'm, you, Kevin. I'm, I'm glad you called, Kevin, and thank you for watching. Okay, and have a happy New Year as well, okay? Oh, thank you, sir. Okay, sir. He's from York, Pennsylvania. Oh, no, now. he's from Clifton, New oh, Jersey. Okay. Good night, good night, Kevin. You know, these days, with all that's going on, I mean, with the uh, with the president orally befriending an intern. Clinton. Uh, yeah. No, and, and Clinton. And, I beg your pardon? I call him Clinton. Oh, William Jefferson Clinton. Okay. Yeah. Very, you, yeah. You, you can do that. You're, <laughs> okay. you're a comedian. And, and people don't seem to be terribly shocked yeah. or outraged yeah. by that. I wonder if we've reached a point in this country where nothing shocks us anymore. Nothing outrages us anymore. Well, um, you're right. I mean, certainly the point is, is well taken. I, I would imagine people would point to, you know, large tragedies, which, of course, to me, <laughs> fun. <laughs> Something blows up, I want to be nearby. But uh, that, that, I think they would talk about that, you know. But uh, the, it's in terms of taboos, are there many taboos left? I think children, I think this is, I'm going to have some fun on this show. There are two things that I really am bearing in on, uh, bearing down on, bearing down on. Um, uh, children and, and prayer, religion. Religion, the, I know. The, the belief you... in prayer, that there's an invisible man in the sky who's actually listening and does things for you. And I have discovered... Uh, that these prayers are about 50% answered, you know, good, and, and, and I'm praying to a different, so I don't want to give away my jokes because I have a very nice joke in, in the body of that. But I think God is, is one of the taboos. I think religion, I, I, I always think I'm going to get someone mad. And so far, I haven't. Uh, th th they haven't made themselves known. But I'm trying to, to up the stakes and get a little, a little more insulting. I know it. the line. I wish you'd use it here. I know you yeah. don't want to, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who you pray to. Yes, you do know it. Good. <laughs> yes, I yeah. do. <laughs> How much showbiz are you? I mean, do you, are you, do you have showbiz friends? Do you pal around with no, showbiz I, they're, people? They're, they're I, I mean, I, I rarely see your, your picture, yeah. you know, in the trade publications and right. parties, things like yeah, that. They don't talk about things that I enjoy. You know, they talk largely about themselves and each other. Um, and that's fine. Uh, but I just don't have a lot of showbiz friends. I know a few people, I, you know, I'm acquaintances with... with Surely. And, 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 and some of them, are, it, it feels good. It feels genuine and nice, like, like it's a real person you could get through to. But it's a waste of time to go to someone else's house. It's a waste of time to have someone come to your house. So I've never done that stuff. Really? I never have to go anywhere. I'm never expecting anyone. And it's just wonderful. But I don't it can be nice when people come to your house. Yeah, I don't even have a doorknob. I must tell you, I've been living in the same house 25 <laughs> years. There's no doorknob on the front door. You have to go in the kitchen to get in. And, the, and there's no bell. You can't tell me you're there. Uh, and, and there's a little doormat that says, go away. It's kind of a joke, but it's lasted a long time. What is it with comedians? All, all of you are misanthropes, aren't you? you uh, to, to some extent. Uh, you know, I, I, I like people as I meet them one by one, but I like to uh, let them know that this, is, this little chat will be over soon. I, I lean toward the direction I wish to go when they're talking. I say, well, that's fine. Well, thank you. Well, and then, well he did. Okay. Well, and you know, when people lean like this in a chair, it could mean something else. Yeah, that's true, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I thank you for that. <laughs> Do you ever use that in your humor, uh, flatulence? Uh, I, did, I did several long routines about it back in the 70s, and I think I exhausted the subject <laughs> from my standpoint. Yeah. 
I remember one night Billy Connolly, the actor, was here, yeah. and we got into a discussion of flatulence, and he did some routines, you know, yeah. the farting horse and this and that. Yeah. It, 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 it is one of our funny or human uh, conditions. Yeah, I mean, it? the fact that air is coming out of me. I once did a thing about a guy who maybe had never done that before in his life, never had a flatulent moment until he was in his 30s, and, oh, it, suddenly, and it suddenly <laughs> happened. And he's, he would have, what would you think? You know, he's, ooh, ooh, geez, air is coming out of me. It was the only thing he could think of to say. Air is coming out of me. Hold on to your hats. <laughs> <laughs> Break a leg on the 6th of February. Thank you. Okay, our great pleasure. George Carlin will be on the air live from New York's Beacon Theater on HBO on February the 6th. You'll check the listings for the exact time and channel in your town. And as is HBO's custom, if they can't make it the 6th, this thing runs, I think, through the entire month they of have February. A, they have, no, well, actually, it extends out about six months. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, check it out. Live from New York's Beacon Theater.